Hello everyone and welcome to the Quampedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today we will discuss crypto trading using Google Trends. Hello everyone, my name is Radan Vodko, I'm CEO and the head of research at Quantpedia. Today we will discuss cryptocurrency trading research. We will discuss how to use Google Trend Indicator and how to use it to trade Bitcoin. Of course, there are a lot of cryptocurrency trading strategies in our database. Currently we have nearly 50 of them. And if you are interested in more articles or videos about the cryptocurrency trading, you can visit our cryptocurrency trading research subpage, which is dedicated to this topic. Let's get back to the topic of today's video. So today we would like to check if we can use the Google Trends sentiment as a predictor for cryptocurrency returns. There is a lot of literature that's related to this subject. It shows that the sentiment has significant impact on the prices of cryptocurrencies. Of course, there are a lot of the time traded by retail investors, so the positive or negative sentiment can have a significant impact on the performance and the prices of individual cryptocurrencies. What is the difference in our article is that we are using the Google Trends data, which are freely available, that are easy to get and they can be used to build an interesting trading strategy. So the Google Trends data are available through the webpage trends.google.com and here you can write any keyword and uh, Google will show you what was the popularity of the topic over the time. So for example, if I put here pandemic, we can figure out or we can see how was the keyword pandemic popular in the Google search over the last years. So we can browse and check the individual countries or we can check the worldwide interest into this topic and we can check how the topic look like over the last, I don't know, 20 years. So here in the case of the pandemic, here we can see how much the word pandemic was searched on the internet. It has several peaks, so one peak is in 2005, one peak is in 2009, and one peak is in 2020, of course, the COVID crisis. So we can use this tool and we can search the keywords that are related to cryptocurrencies. From those keywords, we can build the crypto sentiment index. We build the crypto sentiment index as an equally weighted average of the normalized search or interest over the list of keywords related to cryptocurrency market. So here is the, our list. So the list consists of keywords that are really, really related to crypto trading like blockchain, Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto, HODL, altcoin, DeFi, FOMO, initial coin offering, stablecoin, mining pool, pump and dump, Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin mining, shitcoin, etc. We started collecting data in January 2004. The sample ends in October 2023. Of course, the cryptocurrencies do not exist in the, the real, real sample. We just use the data and the real trading strategy starts in approximately 2019. But why we collect data from January 2004? The reason for that is because we need to recalculate Google Trends data. The Google Trends data are the relative measure of interest at the end of the sample, which is October 2023, so when we did this paper, and we need to recalculate this data to a relative measure of the interest in each month. The question is why do we need to do that? So once again, uh, when we take uh, an example for the word pandemic, uh, so the Google Trends returns data are in the form of percentage as the relative interest in the topic over time. And now imagine that we want to find what is the relative interest of the people using Google search for the word pandemic in October 2023. This is the chart that I showed to you. When we download the data from the Google Trends, there is a notable peak for the word in the year 2020. And it's understandable because that was the COVID-19 pandemic. So the Google Trends shows that the interest in the word pandemic in October 2023 was 4% of the peak. So at the end of the sample, the interest was 4% of the peak of the March 2020 when it hit 100,000. So the 4% in the October 2023 is the correct measure of the interest or the sentiment compared to the highest peak that was experienced. But what about the interest sentiment 3% that was experienced in April 2016? So go back here. So in April 2016, there was interest 3%. But this 3% in interest in the word pandemic was after the March 2020 COVID peak. However, in April 2016, the COVID-19 didn't exist. So the 3% interest sentiment number in April 2016 can be compared to the peak of March 2020. We must compare it to the data that exists until the time. So we must recalculate this interest sentiment to the highest experienced peak in the data up to April 2016. The highest peak in the interest in the word pandemic before April 2016 was in April 2009. So it means in uh, April 2009, it was the highest. It was 19%. And 3% peak in uh, April 2016 is not 3% from 100%, but 3 divided by 19. In uh, reality, it's actually nearly 19%. So in April 2016, Google Trends showed that interest in the word pandemic was around 19%, not 3%. 
because the highest peak in data was in April 2009 and I mean the data from 2020 were not in the data because it was the future at the time. So what does it mean is we need to download the data and we have the necessity to pre-process the Google Trends data for each selected cryptocurrency keyword for each month before averaging the interest sentiment measures into one equilibrium measure. How did we do it? So for each keyword, we use the initial period from January 2004 to January 2017 as the measuring period. We found the maximum number in the data and then we calculated what's the January 2017 interest sentiment number to the peak up to the date. And then month after the month, we had iteratively increased the measuring period and we recalculated or normalized each month's interest or sentiment to the measuring window's peak. So in this way, we created a relative measure of interest in each month. And then we equally weighted those numbers for each keyword and we produced the final crypto sentiment index. And this is how the resultant index look like. And this resultant index is without the bias. So without the logo head bias. And it shows what was cryptocurrency sentiment index. So what was the interest in the search of the individual cryptocurrency words equally weighted. We can use this sentiment index to try to predict the performance. What is the trading model? So our research idea was to investigate the influence of the sentiment change on the Bitcoin price. But I mean, the earlier studies have shown that the sentiment measure is not the only factor that influences the Bitcoin price. So we wanted to combine the sentiment and we wanted to add also the relationship with the combination of the trend. So we wanted to combine the sentiment and the trend together because I mean, the sentiment is not the only predictor for the future price of the Bitcoin we need to use also the past performance or the past uh, price. So this is our benchmark performance. So this is the pure plain performance of the Bitcoin during the period over which we did the backtest. So it's from uh, 2017 until 2023. Then we tested the trading strategy on a monthly data and the trading decision is always made at the end of the month. And we are building the strategy that will make a decision whether to buy or not to buy the Bitcoin for the next following month. So now we have four scenarios when we have the trend and the sentiment mixed together. So the rule number A, if the monthly sentiment change is positive, so the month to month change in the sentiment is positive, and Bitcoin monthly price change is also positive, so it means the change in the price from month to month is the positive, then we will buy one unit of the Bitcoin for the next month and we hold it for one month. Otherwise, we do not hold any position. This trading rule means that there is the same prediction from the sentiment and the same prediction from the price trend. Uh, now, the rule number B is the same as the A, but the sentiment should not uh, be positive. So we are investing in the Bitcoin when there is a positive trend in the price, but a negative trend in the sentiment. In the rule C, we are investing in the Bitcoin when there is a negative price trend but the positive sentiment trend. So it means they are different. So the sentiment and the price signal are different from each other. And the rule number D is a completely negative of rule number A. So if both sentiment change and the price changes are negative, we invest in the Bitcoin for the next month. If one of them is positive or both of them are positive, we do not hold any position. So those are the four rules. You can build those four rules from two different predictors. We better combine them together. And how did each of those rules perform? So we can go straight to the evaluation. We can look at the charts. So first is the performance of the rule A, which gives you position into Bitcoin for the next month. If the previous month performance was positive and sentiment was also positive. So we can see that it can capture very nice the strong trends in the price of the Bitcoin. But the performance of the rule B and the see so when the sentiment was positive and the price was negative or when the sentiment was negative and price positive so when the predictors differed from each other was nothing spectacular there was nothing that we could gain from that and on the other hand the performance of the rule d when we invest into the bitcoin when the sentiment is negative and also the price is negative it worked very well as a kind of the reversal strategy so it gave us interesting performance we can try to combine those factors. So we can try to combine the rule A and rule D together and we can build the final strategy. So the final strategy will give you the exposure to Bitcoin when the price change is positive and when the sentiment change is positive or you will get position in Bitcoin when the price change is negative and sentiment is negative. So we are combining the momentum 
in the price and momentum in the sentiment with another strategy which is like a reversal in the sentiment the reversal in the price uh, so now we can compare the final strategy with the buy and hold approach of the bitcoin so what we can see is that firstly we have a higher performance so our mixed model has a significantly higher performance it has a lower volatility because we are out of the time when the volatility of the bitcoin is the high uh, we have higher shy ratio we have smaller maximum drawdown and our sorting ratio, which is the performance to maximum drawdown, is significantly higher compared to the just buying and holding the Bitcoin. The mixed model, the A plus D, is the winner with a better performance, better risk metrics. And the resultant strategy achieves nice participation in the Bitcoin price run-ups uh, when the sentiment and the price trends point in the same direction. And additionally, it quickly invests in the mean reversion scenarios when the price and sentiment are both negative, which can help to retain a significant part of the Bitcoin performance and even outperforming. I hope that you liked this trading strategy. It's very, very simple. Just be careful and do not make a mistake. Uh, you need to recalculate the data from Google Trends from month to month to month. So you cannot use just you cannot just download the data and use it without the rescaling or recalculation. Pay attention to that. Otherwise, if you are interested in the Bitcoin trading, I think you can uh, this the strategy can be interesting for you. I hope you like this video. In case you do, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and pick another video. I hope you will like it too. Uh, thank you very much and have a nice day. Are you interested? Then pick another video to learn more, or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.